So the flywheel was quite dirty, oily and greasy. Um, so I've gone around here and I'll probably go around this edge here as well, underneath here. Uh, with a bit of iron cleaner, just to, uh, it's all greasy and oily. Just make sure there's no grease on there at all, uh, oil to then fling on the new flywheel. So gone around with the oven cleaner all the way around and then wire brush uh, got rid of most of it and then use some braking carburetor cleaner just to finish it off didn't look too pitted or scratched okay so loosely screwed on the free torques there put in the clutch alignment tool then put on the old throwaway bearing thrust bearing pressure bearing installed these about three four or five tons next I'm gonna adjust the height of this up and then cinch it down so these line up the little grooves in the old throwaway bearing. So now tighten clutch tool, pressure plate thing until this comes down in line with that. Slowly, slowly do one at a time. Compression in. Compressed in, see the travel, now these meet here and here, and you can see the slack that that's then pushed in. Now also just got to check the friction of the actual clutch, pressure, friction plate. So this might not be accessible, and if it's not accessible, they say just to do another two turns just to make sure. Oh, oh. Okay, now I can't actually turn that friction plate anymore. I guess it's because this uh, is nicely wedged in there, not allowing it to turn. So, but that's on there as far as that can go. So that's all good. I'm gonna now tighten these up uh, to torque. Undo this, and then tighten them up to torque. Forgot to put the. Uh that thing in, flywheel, blocky down thing. All tightened up to 20 newton meters of torque. Unscrew this, put the other two in, re tighten them up to two. DA newton meters, 20 newton meters of torque. I like remove all this. And yeah, put the other three in. <sighs> that was a nightmare getting the uh, central guide out. Really didn't want to come out. 22 newton meters of torque. That one in there. That pipe slots in there. So next is the gearbox. By the way, I did put some lube on there, wipe that off. Um, so yeah, all the bell housing's clean now. That's all torqued up. So next is to put the gearbox onto here um, and adjust appropriately. Get a good angle um, and support the gearbox. So, a lot of wiggling. This was kind of okay. I mean, if I'd use this to get the, the jack off, the gearbox off first, it would have been positioned up better. Use another jack just to twist and align it up. Let's get it in with help from my dad, put the bolts in and I'm going to jack it up I'm going to fit all connectors in the alternator, torque all them up jack up the gearbox, get it on this uh, mounting point and then torque up the rest of the bolts starter motor got two hex funny bolts, one goes there 
and the other one goes not on there, but on the next one on the top. So this goes one at the bottom, the other funny one right at the top, and then you got the other one, and you got the other one with the little nut doofus thing, which goes above that one there. I'm gonna do them at about 35 pounds, 35 new meters to talk. So then that one goes onto there, done about 35 mils, I just cranked them up quite hard. Next, any wiring on there, got the ground clamp down to there. Uh, I think that's like reverse sensor. There, goes on there, somewhere behind there. And that's it, I think, for the gearbox and the engine mount. So, F wire just up there, and that's the reverse. Actually, that's not even the reverse sensor, is it? It might be the reverse sensor, whatever sensor that is. I think that's the crankshaft sensor, the crank sensor. There it is down there. Let's see if I make that a bit smaller. Right there. And just enough cable there, so now I'm just going to wake it all up. Obviously, keeping an eye on the engine, making sure it's not banging into anything. And all other cables are free and loose. Now for the engine mount assembly. So I'll put this all together in this three bolts, one, two, three. This bit obviously comes undone, this bit goes onto the gearbox. This bit then gets bolted in up and on here. These three I'm gonna do up 30 Newton meters. One, two, three screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them. Just done, I think about 20 new meters to talk, but I just done them up really tight. Same with the uh, third nut there, and uh, I did line up these before I took it off. A bit of permanent marker. Now I'm just going to jack up the block until it goes inside. Change the plan, take off the mount, jack it up first, and then put the mount on. So now I've just got to realign the mount so it all lines up. Basically, needs to go around that way a bit more. So, 16 Newton metres on the centre of that one. And now I'm going to go around and tighten up all the bell housing to engine that one. So now this is all positioned under. And these are 54 Newton metres. Okay, a jack at each end. Roughly plonk in steering rack doofers we can clean them up later that's just to enable the two little bolts on the steering rack to slot in to the little two little holes there and just a little bottle jack just to help with the pivoting because when this goes up obviously we've only got two points so it's going to pivot okay before doing anything else Make sure your heat shield is clipped on and in position. Your heat shield is from the driving rack, steering rack. The heat shield's from the steering rack. And you've got a clip there which clips in between these two. There's another clip that goes just up there, clips into there, and can wiggle this in place. Hopefully, bend this back up, pop with it them in, and bend that back down. This is the plan. You can just about see the bolts appearing here and here. This is coming into line where we're going to we pop rivet in. So we're going to put them in and then just give that a little pop rivet. That is kind of the best that I can get those little things on from here. It might have been best to put them on previously when the subframe was out and screwed them on. Um, I actually screwed it onto the pipes and then re-threaded um, that bracket into the subframe when you're putting it in. So where the spring is, is almost like spring of steel, so when I bend it back, you needed to spring some force on it to bend it back in. In the end, I had to get a M3 bolt nut screw 
slide that through there and then tighten it up and then just snapped off the end um, and I'm just gonna mar up the end of that just to stop it coming off I think next time like if this was ever coming off again you'd want to replace that bracket for sure so actually in the end I just put a, a lock nut on there I might squeeze these two together a bit more I don't think they're gonna be squeezed together anymore So this is the suspension, this is part of the subframe mounting, which goes from there across to here, if you can see that. This top one's 100 and this one's 98. Okay, apologising for the flickering on LED, but also when doing the front transmission one at 55 newton meters talk and the other one is 40 or 45 um it's got like a little captive nutty thing protector thing on there so like uh yeah just put a socket or i use a, a, an adjustable wrench just to get on there or over those lugs just to protect it otherwise you snap off one of the uh retaining springs that go on there i don't think it's that much of a deal i think it's just more of a safety feature but there you go Okay, we've probably got some flickering going on here again because we're using an LED light. But if you've got how these go, indentation to the bottom. Little slot hole. This sits on top of this bar, bar here, and on this bar you have the cutouts, the two cutouts either side towards the back, and the two indentations, indentation and up. So I installed these first, um, purely because it's a pain in the ass. You have to really hit these back. There's a captive nut that sits then down into this tube. Um, but if these ain't back in further enough, it doesn't sit in. So you've got to really rack and whack them in. Then putting in this nut in there on both sides, or bolt even. Putting in this bolt in either side, screw. I found it to be a pain in the ass to do so. So all the bolts that hold the subframe are on. Uh, nuts. These nuts here, I replaced them. I replaced the two that go into here and here. Um, the other ones I inspected, and if they looked okay, the threads on the both the nuts and the bolts, they look perfectly fine. Um, and they weren't in too bad a rusty condition. I reused them. Uh, they recommend to use new, um, but it's about two pound fifty a bolt. And the price then starts getting a bit too expensive then. Um, but generally, if they're okay, the torque yields are roughly around 100 newton meters, newton meters, newton meters, and majority of the torques are around 100. Um, so they're not really near like 10.9 grade steel. So that's not really torque to yield, sort of torque strength, so to speak.